Binomial Theorem How to Expand with the Help of Pascal's Triangle What is it? Binomial Theorem is an algebraic method of expanding a binomial expression without distributing. Why? Helps prove many equations in physics and mathematics. Interesting fact. Rabbits are born with their eyes closed and without fur. Now, let's take a look at the Binomial Theorem. So how do we expand binomial expressions using the Binomial Theorem? Well, the first three you should recognize because you have seen them multiple times in your math career. Let's start with the quantity of a plus b raised to the power of 0. Remember, anything raised to the power of 0 is 1. So the quantity of a plus b to the power of 0 is 1. Let's move on to the quantity of a plus b raised to the power of 1. Anything raised to the power of 1 is itself. So the quantity of a plus b raised to the power of 1 is a plus b. Let's move on to the quantity of a plus b raised to the power of 2. This is the last of the three that you have seen multiple times. The quantity of a plus b raised to the power of 2 is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Let's move on to the quantity of a plus b raised to the power of 3. Using the binomial theorem, the expansion of the quantity of a plus b raised to the power of 3 is a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. Let's move on to the quantity of a plus b raised to the power of 4. Using the binomial theorem, the expansion of the quantity of a plus b raised to the power of 4 is a to the 4th power plus 4a cubed b plus 6a squared b squared plus 4a b cubed plus b to the 4th power. And let's move on to the last one that we're going to expand because it keeps getting harder to say. And we have the quantity of a plus b raised to the power of 5. Using the binomial theorem, the expansion of the quantity of a plus b raised to the power of 5 is a to the 5th power plus 5a to the 4th power b plus 10a cubed b squared plus 10a squared b cubed plus 5a b to the 4th power plus b to the 5th power. Woohoo! That was hard to say. Believe it or not, there are a few patterns in all this madness. If you want to find any, pause the video here. Now, let's discuss how all this works. First, let's move these expressions to form a triangle. Now, let's add some coefficients in front of the terms. Do you see any patterns yet? The first pattern is that all the coefficients follow Pascal's triangle. Let's do a quick refresher on how Pascal's triangle works. The first number that we're going to look at is the number 2 in the third row. How do we get 2? If we add the two numbers on top, in this case 1 and 1, the result is 2. The next number that we're going to look at is the number 4 in the fifth row. How did we get 4? If we add the two numbers on top, in this case 1 and 3, the result is 4. The next number that we're going to take a look at is the number 10 in the sixth row. How do we get 10? If we add the two numbers on top, in this case 6 and 4, the result is 10. Now, we can do that for any number when we want to expand any binomial. Now, let's take a look at the properties. Here are the other patterns when dealing with the binomial theorem. The first property is there are n plus 1 terms, the first being a to the n and the last b to the n. And that means we can use the power to figure out how many terms we have. So if we have the quantity of a plus b raised to the power of 10, we have 11 terms because 10 plus 1 is 11. The second property is as we proceed from any term to the next, the power of a decreases by 1 and the power of b increases by 1. Also, the sum of the exponents is equal to n. If it is still a little unclear, don't worry about it. We're going to discuss it in the examples to come. The third property is each term has the form c times a to the n minus k, b to the k, where the coefficient is an integer and k is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, and so forth and so on until n.
And the fourth property is the following formula is true for each of the first n terms. Coefficient of term times exponent of a divided by number of term is the coefficient of next term. And those are the properties of the binomial theorem. Now, let's take a look at the examples we're going to discuss in today's video. Now, let's take a closer look at example one. Let's read the steps. Step one, write down Pascal's triangle. Step two, write down the first part and descend. Step three, write down the next part and ascend. Step four, follow order of operations. Now, let's read the question. Use the binomial theorem to expand the quantity of x plus three raised to the power of four. We've already written down Pascal's triangle. Now, let's write down the quantity of x plus three raised to the power of four so we can show our work. Now we're going to use Pascal's triangle to write down our coefficients. How many terms do we have? Since our power is four, we have five terms because four plus one is five because of property one. Five terms, fifth row. So let's write down one, four, six, four, and one. Now we're going to put addition signs in between each term. It doesn't mean it will stay as an addition sign. That depends on the variables and numbers in the parentheses. Now we're going to put two multiplication signs for each term because we have two terms in the parentheses. Now we're going to put the a term, or in this case x for each term. Let's look at the first one. We have x to the fourth, the next cubed, the next squared, the next to the first, the next to the zero. And that follows property two because our exponents descended. What do you think we're going to put for the b term, or three in this case? The first one is going to be three to the zero, then three to the first, then three squared, then three cubed, then three to the fourth. And that follows property two because our exponents ascended. And that's how you use Pascal's triangle and the binomial theorem to expand binomials. Now let's simplify any numbers with powers. And three to the zero is one, three to the first is three, three squared is nine, 3 cubed is 27, and 3 to the 4th is 81. Now let's multiply the integers together. 1 times 1 is 1, 4 times 3 is 12, 6 times 9 is 54, 4 times 27 is 108, and 1 times 81 is 81. Now let's get rid of the extra fluff. And remember, x to the 0 is 1. So now we have x to the 4th plus 12x cubed plus 54x squared plus 108x plus 81. And that is the expansion using the binomial theorem. If you don't remember it, you can do it the old fashioned way and distribute x plus three four times. And that is the answer for example one. Now let's move on to example two. Let's read the question. Use the binomial theorem to expand the quantity of two x minus five y raised to the fourth power. We've already written down Pascal's triangle now let's write down the quantity of 2x minus 5y raised to the fourth power so we can show our work. Now we're going to use Pascal's triangle to write down our coefficients. How many terms do you think we have? Since our power is 4, we have 5 terms because 4 plus 1 is 5 because of property 1. 5 terms, fifth row. So let's write down 1, 4, 6, 4, and 1. Now we're going to put addition signs in between each term. That doesn't mean it will stay as an addition sign. That depends on the variables and numbers in the parentheses. Now we're going to put two multiplication signs for each term because we have two terms in the parentheses. Now we're going to put the a term, or in this case 2x for each term. Let's look at the first one. We have the quantity of 2x to the fourth, then the quantity of 2x cubed, then the quantity of 2x squared, then a quantity of 2x to the first, then a quantity of 2x to the zero. And that follows property two because our exponents descended. What do you think we're going to put for the b term, or negative 5y in this case? The first term is going to be the quantity of negative 5y to the zero, then the quantity of negative 5y to the first, then the quantity of negative 5y squared, then the quantity of negative 5y cubed, then the quantity of negative 5y to the fourth. 
And that's how you use Pascal's triangle and the binomial theorem to expand binomials. Now, let's distribute the exponents to the quantities. And the first term becomes 1 times 2 to the 4th x to the 4th times negative 5 to the 0 y to the 0. And the second term becomes 4 times 2 cubed x cubed times negative 5 to the 1st y to the 1st. And the third term becomes 6 times 2 squared x squared times negative 5 squared y squared. And the fourth term becomes 4 times 2 to the 1st x to the 1st times negative 5 cubed y cubed. And the fifth term becomes 1 times 2 to the 0 x to the 0 times negative 5 to the 4th y to the 4th. Now let's simplify any numbers or variables with powers. And the first term becomes 1 times 16 x to the 4th times 1. And the second term becomes 4 times 8 x cubed times negative 5 y. And the third term becomes 6 times 4 x squared times 25 y squared. And the fourth term becomes 4 times 2 x times negative 125 y cubed. And the fifth term becomes 1 times 1 times 625 y to the fourth. Now let's multiply the integers together. And 1 times 16 times 1 is 16. And 4 times 8 times negative 5 is minus 160. And 6 times 4 times 25 is 600. And 4 times 2 times negative 125 is minus 1000. And 1 times 1 times 625 is 625. We can't simplify anymore, so now we have 16x to the 4th minus 160x cubed y plus 600x squared y squared minus 1000xy cubed plus 625y to the 4th. And that is the expansion using the binomial theorem. If you don't remember it, you can do it the old-fashioned way and distribute the quantity of 2x minus 5y raised to the 4th power 4 times. And that is the answer for example 2. Now it is your turn, so go ahead and pause the video here so you can take your time to answer this question and I will show you the result in 3, 2, and 1. Did you get it correct? Fantastic. If not, there is always tomorrow.